And welcome back to another edition of In-Depth with Idaho State University Athletics. I'm Jerry Miller, voice of the Bengals. And with us today, a brand new face in the athletic department. Actually, maybe not that new. He came on board in April, but welcome to Alexander Free, the new men's tennis coach at ISU. How are you, coach? I'm doing well. Uh, we just finished up our morning morning lesson and uh, getting the guys going finally in season and um, thrilled to be here and super excited to, to be on the show with you. Well, tell us how in the world you ended up at Idaho State, because when I read your bio, I see Texas, Appalachian State, you've been around. How did you end up as the head coach at ISU? I have. Well, I, um, you know, when the season ended uh, at the end of the year, we were uh, in Arizona and I was kind of looking around and ISU was the job that was open. And I was thinking about trying to put my name out there and maybe make a jump to, to being a head coach. And I ended up just happening to know someone that worked in the athletic department. And my roommate was actually born in Pocatello uh, in Tucson. And it kind of worked out where we knew a couple people and uh, they got me an interview and uh, I guess they liked my vision for the program, and, and here we are. Well, that's pretty remarkable. You were an assistant coach at the University of Arizona. You've also played tennis at uh, University of Texas in Tyler, and you also played at Appalachian State. Talk about your playing experience um, and when you actually started your coaching career. Sure. So I played um, at three different schools. I played my freshman year at Tyler Junior College, and then I played uh, two years at the University of Texas at Tyler. I had an unbelievable coach there, Chris Bizot, who really kind of showed me that coaching was a, a great profession and I wanted to be around it. And, um, you know, UT Tyler gave me a lot of opportunities to explore all of my interests outside of tennis and really grow as a person. Uh, I got to be student government president when I was there. I got to win two conference championships when I was there. So an unbelievable experience. And then um, I was home over break, uh, looking to do a master's program. And one of my uh, doubles partners from the juniors called me and said, hey, uh, maybe you should look at doing that MBA or, or your master's here at Appalachian State. Um, and that ended up being Trey Morris, who is the head coach now at Montana State. Uh, so he was my roommate through my time at Appalachian State. And um, you know, we had an awesome uh, experience there and um, kind of was out of tennis for a semester um, in my fifth year of grad school and, and finishing things up, uh, coaching at a country club. And um, when our coach at Appalachian State was fired and uh, my friend Jack Maddox, he, he called me and said, hey, they want us to kind of help run the program. And do you mind moving back and helping me uh, coach and be my assistant for a year? And so uh, it was a, a great experience to kind of learn what it's like to run a program, how to, you know, organize practices. And um, then I got the opportunity to move to Arizona and do that for two years. And uh, now we're here. Uh, I just think about um, all of the experience you've had. And now here you are in Pocatello, Idaho at Idaho State University. When did tennis become part of your life? I was uh, about 10. Um, my dad played football in college at the University of Memphis, and uh, I was, you know, a typical kid from Alabama. I played football, baseball, basketball, and uh, I kind of got to the point where I was trying to choose what sport I wanted to play, and baseball maybe wasn't my favorite, and I said, well, I want to do something when there's no football or basketball, and um, started playing tennis, and then it became, well, I don't want to get hurt uh, the tennis to, when I'm playing football. So I guess I won't play football. And then I think I played one more year of basketball and um, I was hooked, you know, once I kind of got into tennis and um, I think I'm just super competitive and it was just something that I really wanted to be good at. I, I enjoyed doing, uh, I think as a kid, I really enjoyed the individual nature of, of improvement and development. And then, uh, you know, now I, I really enjoy the team part of it, but um, you know, so I, I've been around for probably 15 years now. And um, I think this past, 175 days has been the longest I've not been on a tennis court my whole, you know, since I was 10 years old. Well, that's remarkable. Of all those sports that, that you mentioned, which one is your favorite? Outside had of tennis? Been, had you been able to go on and, and uh, play and play and play, which one did you like the best? Probably football. Just growing up, it, it's such a, a culture and almost a religion in, in Alabama where I'm from and um, like I said, it, it's a family thing for me. So I, I think 
uh, in terms of sports I like and enjoy watching, probably football is second to tennis. As you've gone through your story and how you ended up here, do you ever stop and think about how thin threads make such a big difference? Yeah, um, and, and how you know small the margins really are of of which way you, you could have gone, you know. And uh, I, I think certainly if you would have told me four years ago where we would be now, um, I think it would be. I, I don't think I'd believe you. You know, I always kind of had this goal in my mind of um, becoming a head coach. I, I certainly didn't think it would happen uh, this soon, uh, especially jumping into coaching kind of late after doing a master's and. Um, yeah, it, it's crazy of all like, you know, if, if one piece kind of falls out of place, maybe, maybe we're not here, but uh, I'm thankful that it has and uh, really excited about it. Obviously, things are different than you probably expected them to be with your first head coaching job with the pandemic and everything else that's going on. What are you doing right now in the absence of any kind of fall season to keep your players engaged? Yeah, I, you know, I think we're putting a, a big emphasis on development and um, really what we've been doing is hitting it really hard and with our conditioning and trying to build that base, but also trying to do a lot of skill instruction, uh, individual attention with each guy and, and trying to really fine tune some parts of their games that and make some changes that, hey, maybe you wouldn't make if uh, you have a match coming up in two weeks, you know, maybe I'm not going to change that forehand or, or, you know, change the implement this new game plan. Uh, when I'm playing soon. So now, hey, it's four months until we play. I, I like to find the positive in this and say, let's make some really big jumps in development that you probably haven't had uh, in a couple of years, you know? And so let's maximize this time. And by the time we get ready for January, we're going to be in a really good place. And uh, in the meantime, I, I'm lucky my team is competitive and they don't mind playing against the guys in the team and, and going after each other pretty hard. You played and coached at different levels of university experience. Talk about the team you've got and what you see. Yeah, I, I think this is um, one of the more rawly talented teams that I've been around. And I think, you know, there's some really good players here. Uh, the challenge for us this year is going to be kind of developing our, our tennis IQ and, and really building on that competitive nature and, and learning how to play points. You know, we have a lot of guys that hit the tennis ball really well um, that are incredibly enthusiastic and energetic to be here. And now it's just adding structure to their game uh, so that we know when we're in points, what we need to do. And uh, that was kind of my message to the team after our first practice is, hey, this is a tremendously talented team, but we got to get a whole lot smarter on the tennis court if we want to turn that into wins uh, in the springtime. Define tennis IQ for us. I think it's knowing, um, you know, what shot to hit at the right time. So when you're four feet behind the baseline, not trying to go for the unbelievable uh, sports center winner. You know, maybe a lot of times in tennis, uh, this game is built around making the other guy miss or giving the other guy the opportunity to miss. Uh, and so we have to do a little bit more than that earlier in points rather than just trying to, you know, maybe slap the ball early and, and try to get something quick. And so I think a lot of that, we're, we're working on our patience. We're working on our, um, you know, our directionals when we're playing and, and where to hit the ball. And we're trying to get a lot better at those, those certain things. As you begin a head coaching career, talk about the principles that you want to focus on and what kind of trademark you want Alexander Free coach teams to have. Absolutely. Um, one is just this relentlessly competitive atmosphere of a program. So everything that we do uh, is going to be competitive from our practices uh, to in, in the classroom. Uh, in the weight room. I want all of our guys to be competing all the time. And when people get on the court, they're like, those guys just fight like crazy. Uh, and then second, you know, we talk a lot about here in the short time we've been here about this idea of an apex mentality and really believing that you can be the best, uh, that you bring a championship mindset to everything that you do. Uh, and just having this idea that we're going to be the best in every aspect of our life and every aspect of our tennis game off the court, on the court, you know, that's what we're going to bring every time we step on the court. And uh, that's kind of what we've been preaching the first you know, month or two of being here. You came from the University of Arizona. <laughs> How different is Tucson from East Idaho? It's, you know, it is different. I mean, you're in the desert. It's uh, the weather right now is, you know, kind of chilly in the mornings here and it gets really nice in the middle of the day. And in Tucson right now, it's really hard to be outside in the middle of the day because <laughs> it's 105. And so, um, you know, a lot of here is indoor tennis compared to, you know, your outdoors year round there. And 
Um, a lot of it's just kind of a different culture, but uh, we're, we're, you know, I really like it here. I like being down in the valley and having the mountains around it makes me feel like uh, I'm back at Appalachian State a little bit. So uh, it feels like home already and we're, I'm, I'm kind of fitting in really well. Well, coach, um, Idaho State University, I think is pretty fortunate to have you and be able to watch you launch your coaching career. Talk about um, how you prepare for that spring season with really nothing to do to get ready for it in the fall in terms of competition. Yeah, I, I think we're gonna try to find ways. We have uh, eight guys on campus right now. We're gonna find ways to kind of maybe do a, an orange and black match against each other on the weekend, or we'll do a, an inner team tournament where we're, we're playing eight guys in the quarterfinals and we'll run through a draw with three matches. And um, you know, that way we get that match play experience. Tennis is lucky, you know, you, you, you can kind of work with the guys on your team and still play matches and every guy you're gonna play is different. So you have seven different opponents if you're on this team that you can practice with at this time. And maybe that's different than, than football where you only have one first team and a second team and you can't really replicate what it looks like against another first team here. Um, you can really see that and you get a lot of different players and different levels. And so um, we'll, we'll make it work and, and we'll be ready for the uh, uh, University of Utah come January. Coaching at Arizona, I don't know how much you were involved with the recruiting aspect of things, but talk about how recruiting at a Pac-12 school will be different or is different than what you have to do at a school in the Big Sky Conference. Sure. Uh, I think a lot of when you're at a Pac-12 school, a lot of the guys you're getting are, are fairly polished when they come in. You know, uh, we had a great recruit when uh, at Arizona when I was there that was top 30 in the world. And I think we had two of them. And they're, you know, they come in as elite talents and guys that are very ready to play at the collegiate level on day one. And, and what we're getting here at ISU is guys who maybe are, um, we've had really good luck with guys, 400 ITF, you know, 400 in the world in the juniors. And they're obviously great players, but there's, there's maybe a reason that they weren't top 100, you know. And, and so we have to kind of find that and develop it early on campus. And so uh, we're placing a big importance here in this program on development over maybe trying to bring in the best player. You know, I, I kind of look for the guys I think will fit well into our program and, and really mesh with our culture and are going to kind of build this brotherhood and this program with me rather than, um, you know, someone that wants to come in and compete for a national championship in year one, you know? Uh, and my sales pitch to, to every recruit is, hey, if you want to come to a program that doesn't have a maybe elite tennis history and then build a fantastic program and be a part of that journey and leave a legacy that after your four years here, people are gonna go, wow, that guy left this place a lot better than he found it, then this is a great place for you. And if, if you wake up in the morning as excited as I do about that challenge, then you're gonna fit in awesome in our program. Coach Alexander Free, it's been great to talk to you today. And uh, we're excited to have you on board at Idaho State University. Look forward to watching you and the Bengals hit the court. Thank you, I appreciate it, yeah. We'll see you guys in, in January, and hopefully we get a, a full season here. All right. That does it for our conversation with Coach Free. Go Bengals.